Is this drink gonna give me wings? No, that's Red Bull. Oh. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. We have another guest for you this week, and I want to tell you a little bit about my band. I have a band called the Hula Girls. It was rooted in rockabilly, but all filtered through kind of like a, a Hapa Howley surf kind of thing. We had go-go dancers on the sides of the stage while we performed, and we've never had one of the go-go dancers on this show till tonight. So I would love to welcome one of my very dear friends, Miss Audrey Lorraine, onto the show. Aloha. Hello. Hello. Audrey Lorraine. Hello. So, uh, do you remember when you started in the band? Uh, I think it was 2010. That was a long time of performing in the band uh, together. Yes, it was. And we were fortunate enough to play a bunch of different tiki bars. Do we you do you recall which tiki bars we performed in? This one um, really sticks out in my mind. I think it was called. Don the Beach <laughs> Yes, that was that was certainly one. But there were others, right? A ton. Care to elaborate? Gosh, I believe we've played here before. True, we have performed parties. here, yeah. And before the uh, whole quarantine thing, we filmed our music video. Mm -hmm. I just watched that the other day. Oh, it's the first time you watched it? Yeah. It only took a year and a half. <laughs> what about like Bahuka? Did you dance with the Bahuka? No. So we had a rotating cast of ladies who performed with us. So some of them got to perform at a bunch of different places and some of them got to perform at a bunch of other different places. But Audrey was instrumental in a lot of the Don the Beachcomber shows. A lot. Yeah. It was a good time. It was. Well, speaking of Don the Beachcomber, tonight we're going to make a cocktail from Don the Beachcomber that is probably the most, might be one of the most important cocktails of all the cocktails mm -hmm. because this was the inspiration for Trader Vic's Mai Tai. Oh. 1937. This is the QB Cooler. And the cute, the cutie cooler, not the cutie cooler, cutie. If I ever had somebody that was close ish to being a sister, not me and don't point at me. I'm not a sister. You could be. It was a fraternity of aviators in the 1920s that was formed cool. by like seven World War One pilots. Nice. You are a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, no, I'm super smart. This is the QB cooler right here. You can see it even kind of looks like a Mai Tai, right? Yeah. There's mint in it, and that's the only garnish. So we're gonna make it in a double bucket, and uh, and we're gonna garnish it with mint. So for this cocktail, we will be using limes, oranges, soda water, honey mix, which is one to one honey to water, ginger syrup, falernum, Demerara rum, we're gonna be using the Eldorado 12, gold Jamaican rum, we're gonna be using the Appleton Reserve, and for the light rum, we're gonna be using Don Q Crystal. Have you ever had this cocktail before? No. Let's jump into it then. Please. Okay, can you cut that lime in half? Careful, that is super sharp. Sure is. We need half an ounce of lime juice for this cocktail, so for two cocktails, we will use one ounce of lime juice. Squeeze away. Now it goes this way, right? Yeah, face down. These are not very juicy. We may not get a whole ounce. I think we're gonna get about five drops. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we need another lime. So there is one ounce of lime juice. We need orange juice. You know what? This one? No, you're, oh my God. <laughs> Please don't cut your hand open. You're a doctor. I need my hands. I need Seriously. my hands. No, she, she, she's a doctor. I'm not joking. Okay. That's true. One ounce of orange juice for this cocktail, so we need two ounces of orange juice. Bigger squeezer. They do make orange ones. Kind of just tuck the front end of these things, and it seems to work pretty well, so that when you go to squeeze them, it kind of... But you gotta hold it with your thumb, too. I mean, it's just there so it doesn't sneak out of the back. How much of orange juice again? Two ounces for two drinks, so one ounce per cocktail. Do you want to do this one? No. I know, but I think it'll be amusing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is anything going out? I don't know. There it is. Woo! You did it. Two ounces of orange juice. So for this cocktail, we need half an ounce of honey mix per cocktail, so one ounce of honey mix. Yes. Um, how do you... Oh! <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Is it? 
pour a little bit of that in back in. Oh man, you're contaminating my honey mix. I do it. I do One honey ounce. Mix contaminating my <laughs> Let's do the falernum next. Do you know what falernum is? Uh, it's a syrup, isn't it? Ginger, cloves, nutmeg. Mm. Smell that. <laughs> Why is everything so hard? That's what she said. Okay, so we need a quarter ounce of falernum, so that means half an ounce. Much. It's gonna be a sweet one. You have a heavy pouring hand. I get that from my husband's shit. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Half an ounce of Falernum. Mm. This is gonna be a good cocktail. So you're familiar with the like the Trader Vic's Mai Tai, of course. Yes. I'm curious to see how close this tastes to Trader Vic's Mai Tai. Because yeah. the word is 1944, Vic went to Hollywood to Don the Beachcombers mm -hmm. and he had a QB cooler. And he was like, I want to make this cocktail at my bar in Oakland and then he named it the Mai Tai. So by memory, he went, this is what I remember it tasting like, and you can tell there's a zillion ingredients here. Yeah. And there's only like five ingredients in a Mai Tai. Limes, orange juice, sour, orange juice, simple syrup, rum, rum, six. Hmm. Okay, so we need one ounce of gold Jamaican rum per cocktail. So we will use the apple tin for that. So that means two ounces of rum. Mm, be a boozy drink, huh? What do you think about corks? Are you disappointed there's no cork there? Um, corks are fun. Mm -hmm. Two ounces of gold Jamaican rum. I have a question. Yes. Is, is this going to be shaken, stirred? Okay. Does it matter what order these ingredients go in? The only thing that would matter would be the soda water. Okay. Usually you want to stir soda water in afterwards because you don't want it bubbling all over the place. Right. But I don't think there's enough soda water to cause a, a commotion, so okay. we'll probably put it in also. All right. Uh, yeah, so we can do the so Demerara. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, this is cool. We'll do the Demerara rum, and the Demerara rum is half an ounce per cocktail, so one ounce of Demerara rum. Oh, here's a cork. <laughs> what a fun one. <laughs> One ounce of light rum per cocktail, so two ounces of light rum. Yeah, it's kind of a boozy one. Mm -hmm. In fact, on the menu, Don the Beachcomber says limit only two per person. Aww. So, yeah. Oh, it's a bummer, I never had one of these. Well, you're having one right now. Yeah, but never at Don the Beachcomber. True. Okay, two dashes of bitters, so we need four dashes of bitters. Now, do you know how to do a dash? No. Trust me with that. Your dear friend, Mr. Kelly Merrill, taught the show a while ago how to do a dash. And this is a dash. That's one. Two. Okay. So dash away. Four. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That's, have that one on your bar. that's quite a mess. So ginger syrup next. I don't know that I've ever smelled ginger syrup. This is a brand new bottle from Lieber & Co. Mm. Fiery ginger syrup. Is it fiery? Mm. It's fiery. We need half a teaspoon of ginger syrup per cocktail. So we will be using one teaspoon of ginger syrup. So the trick with this is to pour it in this thing over something. Okay. So you're not you're not contaminating your drink if you pour too much. Go all the way to the top, please. See, I know. Good thing that keep was going. there. Keep going. Yeah, keep Let's going. Go all the way to the top. Okay. See, it's okay if it's like a little bit over because you know that you have precise measurements. Oh. You want it to have the bubble. What do they say? Meniscus. Is that what it is? Wow, look at that. Jeez, gross. <laughs> fiery, right? That's fiery. So good, I can't. So this may not taste like a Mai Tai at all. Who knows, with the cacophony of other ingredients, mm. maybe it melds into Mai Tai flavors. Yeah. Okay, so the last ingredient is gonna be the soda water. <gasps> mm. So we need one ounce of soda water per cocktail. Again, I would normally stir that in afterwards, but... Do you want to wait? Yeah. It's gonna be a bubbly mess. It will be a bubbly mess, you're right. Okay, so we're gonna wait on the soda water until after the, the drink has been mixed. Some fresh ice from Sonic. I always forget they have their ice. It's the best good idea. possible ice. cocktail ice for tiki drinks. Yeah. And you Without want... buying that machine. Yeah. 
The machine's too expensive. So we're gonna mix it on high for about five to six seconds. So just push it all the way against the back. There you go. And up. That's probably good right there. What are you tapping the thing for? <laughs> okay, so I have an idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two ounces of the soda water. We're gonna turn the mixer to low and then we'll just kind of mix it in. Two ounces. Okay, two ounces. So this is gonna be a, a gingery, fiery, rummy, bubbly drink. I'm super excited about this. Okay, can you flip the switch there? Yep, there. So now it's on low, and just give it like a little bit of a... <whistles> what? <sighs> Maybe a little longer. Yeah. All right. And for this cocktail, we will be using Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour glasses. Mm. Very fancy, huh? Cocktail special. Do you have Hula Girl glasses? Yes. I don't think I have any left. I think I killed them. Aw, that's no, no. good. That's a good thing, right? Well, I, that means I used them a lot. Yeah. We need more ice. Mm. We've done a really good job at making a mess. We have. Get out of this and put that. Get out of here. Okay, and so of course we're gonna garnish it with the mint that we saw depicted in the, uh, the menu there. Take this. Don't have to smack it. See, it's a professional right there. <laughs> Spent a lot of time in tiki bars, right? Okay. A little bit of a whack. Let's stick that in there. And then check out what I have. From the early days of Don the Beachcomber returning to Southern California, they created these swizzle sticks. I believe I have a couple of these. I would imagine you do. <laughs> so we'll stick that in there. And oh. remember these? Yeah. They made these coasters and they're signed on the back by Sinatra and Dean Martin and Joey Bishop and Sammy Davis Jr. and Red Skelton. Oh How did Red Skelton end up in that group? And so from Don the Beachcomber's original menu in 1937 in Hollywood, California, this is the QB Cooler. Mm. Can I have a sit down? Yes, you can have some straws. Mm. Are you ready for this? I'm super excited about this drink. Oh, wow. It kind of tastes like a Mai Tai. Yeah, it way more than I thought it would. Yeah. There's like that acidity from the lime juice, but then I think the ginger syrup does something to kind of like maybe emulate like an orange curacao or, or, or jade or something? Yeah, because it's totally tame in here, not like mm -hmm. what we tasted. But there is an aftertaste that is different from the Mai Tai. Yeah. So not exactly the same. But can you believe that Trader Vic went to Hollywood, had that cocktail, drove all the way back to Oakland. Yep. Swam all the way back to Oakland and then made that drink from his mind. Well, not this drink, the Mai Tai. Can you believe it? Do you think it was a happy mistake? They say that, that this was the inspiration for the Mai Tai. Well, I can so. definitely taste that. Yeah, it's so it's so shocking how close that resembles the Mai Tai though. Yeah. The ginger is fiery. It is. Can you taste that? Mm -hmm. I like that. I this like is that a too. good drink, man. I like that. It's sweet, but it's not just sugar. Yeah, there's yeah. like a little bit of heat to it. If you have all the ingredients to this at home, Make this at home. It's a treat. It's so funny thinking about the go-go dancers of the hula girls. I think of you and Judy, and I think of Neva and um, Veronica. Yeah. It was really you, Judy, and Dinah for a long time. Yeah, it was. Well, Dinah, Judy, myself. Yeah, but you're the longest surviving one. What does that say about me? I don't know. Just got nothing <laughs> else to do, I guess. Nothing else to do. Beyond just being a go-go dancer, you also trained in hula. Yes, they still do. Hula, Tahitian, mm -hmm. a little bit of Maori. Mm. I think that's one of the most positive things that comes from Tiki is literally learning about these ancient cultures and being so passionate about them that, that you want to partake in things like their dance and mm -hmm. learning about the art and all kinds of stuff. So it definitely led me down the path more of uh, Polynesia. Do you remember what your first show was? Actually, yeah, it was the Dick Dale. No, 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 no. It was at the Coach House. It was at the Coach House. Yeah. But that one was not the Dick Dale show. That was my, 
that was the second time I played with you guys at the coach house. You guys had already played there a few other times. Was that the knitters? Yes. <laughs> knitters, K-N-I-T-T-E-R-S. Very scared about the, the YouTube algorithm going, uh, this video is banned. There was years and years of everything from shows at beaches to private parties to yes. rooftop things. Yeah, and all the way up to San Francisco and Lawson. Yeah. And oh, that's right. Spring. We played the same stage that they like. They listed all of the names of people who had played that sh that stage in Laughlin. Oh, okay. And it was like Elvis and and Sinatra and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, wild. Yeah, we've definitely played some cool things. Yeah, and then open for Dick Dale. And... Open for Dick Dale. Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, that was a fun one. That's probably my favorite photo of us performing. <laughs> that one. I know. It was a good time. Yeah. And then also just all the years at Dawn the Beachcomber. Mm -hmm. And it was such like a meeting place for everybody and it was so... Um, it was home. The home away from home for us. Yeah. Maybe that'll be a thing again. Yeah. Sometime. We'll hope you so. You made a post about something the other day. I did make a post about the old Don the Beachcomber. I don't want to announce anything yet. I'm interested to find out more someday. Me too. What's the show that sticks out the most? The show that the sticks years? out the most. You know, we opened for... Lee Rocker and the Reverend Horton Heat and the Addicts. And That's right, that was a fun show too. Yeah, Slim Jim Phantom of the Stray Cats, X. We were on that same show with Junior Brown and uh, Make the Music Go Bang Festival. Mm -hmm. Yep, that was a fun day. Yeah, that was a super fun day. The show that sticks out the most, I don't know. I always think about the big shows, yeah. like Viva Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Like I can still picture you and Judy getting ready. Like. <laughs> Backstage, the Coach House were always fun shows, mm -hmm. and the Galaxy, the yeah. Observatory. Yeah, the so I don't, I don't know if there's a, a particular show that stands out. It was a long, it was a long time with a lot of good times. Yes. Yeah. Is well, there a show that sticks out to you? When I was thinking about the other day, just because we were coming back from Palm Springs, it was the show from Hell. Oh wow! <laughs> Literally, when we were dancing on the surface of the sun. Yeah, it was kind of like a one-off, like rockabilly festival or something at this pool club pool or something club. yeah in palm springs and it was like 112. was it 112. yeah i think so they decided to put like um see-through kind of like mesh yeah. above black. everything it was black but it was black yeah so it was like attracting heat on a black stage on a black stage i remember shorty switched from steel guitar to his electric guitar and then when he went back to play steel guitar he couldn't pick up his bar yeah. because it was too hot and you guys couldn't dance on the stage. Nope. Because they were barefoot and the stage was- cool. Searing our feet. Yeah. <laughs> and I could feel it through my Doc Martens, like yeah. the heat coming through there. It wasn't it was safe. So bad. And even dancing on the grass was hot. Yeah. I think we actually had to stop dancing early. <laughs> you did. I remember that, you we did. we just quit sweating. <laughs> yeah, and when you stop sweating, it, things get dangerous. Yeah. When Doug was breaking down his drum kit, he couldn't remove the cymbals because they were too hot. Crazy. Yeah, that's a, that's a memorable one for sure. Another fun one, not necessarily because of the show, but because of the lack of changing area. Oh, ink and iron? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Judy and I got to change behind, I don't know, like somebody's Some road cases or, or like some tables that were stood up or something. <laughs> and they just kind of made a fort in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. And then changed back there. Ink and Iron was a good time too. Yeah. That was always yeah. a fun show. We played on the Queen Mary. <laughs> I thought I put you were on that. Maybe not. Maybe not. No. What do you think of this drink? Had a lot of girls over the years. <laughs> Who has? <laughs> you. Oh. I think this drink is amazing. It's good, right? Yeah. You've only drank, what? You've only drank like a eighth of it. So have you. Oh. <laughs> and with that, folks, thank you so much for joining us once again on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you uh, aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Please be sure to like, comment, and uh, join the Patreon. You can get a pin, an enamel pin. Mm -hmm. Join. Join the club. Join Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour VIP section of the Breezeway yes. section. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Thanks for coming back. Of course. Into my life. One of my favorite people. 2010 and it is 2022 now. Wait. No. <laughs>
21. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, bless you. Is that thing blocking your face? <laughs> Limes? <laughs> this is very distracting. What am I, your slave driver? If you're the slave driver, that would be pointing at other people. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. What am I, your slave driver? I don't think you can say that these days. I'm just gonna put it there, huh? Oh. Wait, yeah, it is, right? Gold Jamaican rum. We're gonna be using the Appleton Reserve. Hmm. And for the Lord. <clears throat> I just went down the stairs. Oh, okay. I went to your basement. No, crowd me. Like, not in a weird way. When I had my friend Tara on here, she was like, uh, we don't have any orange juice. And there was like a whole bunch of oranges over there. I was like, well, orange juice lives in orange. <laughs> oranges. See how you are. How, what do you mean, see how I are? I keep leaving these things here, and in the morning, it's like just shredded fruit. Because there's a creature that keeps mm. eating them all. Creature of the breezeway. Okay, so for this cocktail, we need two, what? I don't know why you're stressing me out. Sorry. <laughs> Very excited, this is a brand new bottle. This is a brand new bottle. <laughs> ah, hold on. Astro, you can't eat that. <laughs> From the early days of Don the Beachcomber coming back to Southern California. From the early days of Don the Beachcomber coming back. <laughs> now I'm gonna fuck. Blow it for an hour. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Get on my light. Gosh, I've always seen on my light. Who said that? I never said that. That's what you would have said. What? Yeah, we're. Done. No, the show's I going. See, I was seeing where I was. Dude. What? Well, I won't use any of the stuff that's gonna. <laughs> I tricked you. <laughs> I didn't trick you. I just, I did, like, I did the sign off, and then I was like, okay, okay we're gonna keep talking. Okay. It's just, I want to make sure I don't forget that. Because if I forget that, then you're coming all the way back from wherever the hell you live. Oh yeah, Pacific Seas. So what's that? Are they, what's, you did something, you did some shoes. Are they open? So or? two episodes ago, I was at Pacific Seas with Miss Penna Palmer. Mm -hmm. Do you know Sarah? I No, I don't know her. She's lovely. Mm -hmm. We used to play a lot at Pacific Seas at Clifton's. Yeah, I know. Talk about a thorn in my ass. <laughs> Awful. It was awful? Thursday night, 10 to f 1 in the morning? Yeah. Downtown LA. All of us, maybe not you, but all of us had to get up and go to work the next I morning. I had to get up. I had a job. It's like a job you job. Did. Oh, I did. Yeah, it sucked the next day, but at least we were, in L we were in LA, being a band, performing for LA people. <laughs> that were drunk and falling on stage. Somebody crashed into Katie one night. I wasn't there, but. Oh yeah, we did. You should have seen the bruise on her leg from that. Yeah, we did have we did have audience members who got way too drunk, knocking into the dancers or knocking them off their go-go boxes. Or stepping yeah. on our feet. That's the thing about tiki drinks is people don't understand. Like if you have two of these things, you are on the way to Drunk Town USA. If you have three, you're you're living firmly in drunk town. Totally gonna get cursed in the tiki. <laughs> I've had it countless times. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. But then there was also like festivals, right? Like um, Tiki Caliente. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did a bunch of those oh, events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Couple of oasises. Tiki there oasis, was yeah. One year we did seven hours worth of gigs in that weekend. Yeah, that's when I lost my voice, right? <laughs> I think that weekend permanently destroyed my vocal cords. Maybe. I'm, I'm totally serious. It was seven hours of performing. Permanently destroyed my body. Seven hours of performing in three days. Three days. Yeah, I think we did a wedding. I think we did two room parties. I think we did the um, the parking lot, like the car show. Was that, all, that's what it was then. That was that yeah. Extra. And then also we did uh, the main stage, yeah. Oh, and the Sunday show and my voice was gone. Like, gone, gone. <laughs> and it's so frustrating when you know your singing abilities to sing that note and just not get anywhere near it. And so, oh man, 
A lot of people were very supportive. We got a standing ovation. Uh, we got a. Stand <coughs> I know, I lost my voice again. Just the memories. <laughs> we got a standing ovation that year, but it was like a pity ovation, so I don't know if I count it. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of people after the show were very supportive. They were like, oh my God, I totally understand. You did such a good job. Like, And I was just like, I auto thought that I had been like partying the whole time. Like I was just getting wasted the whole time. And I was literally, you can't work your voice that hard and yeah. yeah. But there was one guy, Mr. J, oh. comes up to me after the show. He goes, hey, Spike, that was horrible. <laughs> you know, Mr. J's seen a lot of shows, but that was really bad. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. All right, I love Mr. J. Yeah, so do I. I, I thought that was funny. Like also a little sharp, like a little cutting. Because it's from New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's this drink doing for you? Do you like it more, less? I'm definitely liking it more. But there's a lot of rum in it, too. There's a lot of rum in it. Just as good <laughs> as before. Sip number one. Was there a favorite show that we played at Don the Beachcomber? Like a memorable one? Um, the New Year's shows were a lot of fun. And probably, I, gosh, I couldn't say which one, but the um, the Halloween ones you used to do. Oh, Those yeah. Those were always a lot of fun. The Curse of the Tiki. Yeah. The one where you dressed up like a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best. There, <laughs> there were a lot of bad costumes that I came up with. I think the most embarrassing to look back on now were, uh, I was, a, everybody in the band were sharks. Yes. I don't think I was there that year. I don't think so. It might have been Judy and Neva. But I was a dolphin. <laughs> and like I kind of had to hop to the microphone because like my feet were stuck together. Like, damn, I wasn't there. Like my big comedic moment was like looking at my, my guys who were all dressed as sharks <laughs> and going, I thought you guys said we we're going to be dolphins. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> That's about how the joke landed as well. <laughs> People were like, there you go. Yeah, the monkey, and that's another photo mm -hmm. that is like so memorable because it was backstage and I think you were like pinning a fez to my head. Something, yeah. Yeah. And it was like Kevin, my so old cool. roommate, Kevin Stewart from Big Sandy and the Fly Right Boys yeah. playing bass. And I was so used to like being upset about the band members not being ready. I was like, where the, where the f is Kevin? And, <laughs> And I look over and Kevin's like, hey dude. <laughs> He's all like ready to go and dressed like a monkey. And yeah, that was a good, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun times. I know, you were always wondering where those girls were. I was always wondering where everybody was. I know, and you guys are usually like. Maybe because we had like 550 safety pins to put into our outfits mm -hmm. and coconuts. I know. I have scars <laughs> from those damn things. From the coconuts? We all do. <laughs> brutal. It is brutal. Remember when we used to wear shoes? We used to wear wedges to dance in? Yeah, on the go-go boxes even. Yeah, danger. All because it was cool. I know. I had bad ideas. Good bad ideas. They were just bad. Okay, I think we're done. Yeah. Are we done? It's a wrap. Okay, thanks again. It was fun. <laughs> I gotta finish my drink now. Super f***ing hammered. Thanks. <laughs> It kind of has a lot of rum. It's a lot of rum. All right. <laughs>